Hey everybody, I'm going to show you how to create a product mock-up in Adobe Photoshop. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is open up our product and we're going to do a mock-up template for a placemat. We're going to open up a picture of this mat. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a duplicate of this layer and we'll turn that off just so we have a backup copy. Now in this layer, we're gonna get our Bezier pin and we're gonna draw a path around the white part of the mat. So we'll just click and drag with our Bezier pin to draw a path around that. And if you don't get it perfect, just go ahead and draw it around and we can come back and adjust it later. You want to stay right there on the edge where you want the image to go. And just come all the way around the product. When you get back to the starting point, your Bezier pin will have that little O. So you click that node, it'll connect. Now if you hold the command key down and click on the line, you can grab these nodes and move them around. You can get them exactly where you want them. You can adjust these handles. We want to get that line right on the edge where we want to clip that picture. Pull that down a little bit. Pull this over a little bit. And that looks pretty good right there. Then if we come over here to our layers palette, click on paths, you'll see we have that work path right there we just created. We'll click off of that. Now what we want to do is drag this down to make a copy of that path. And now we want to adjust the second path to include this brown area. So we'll go back to our layer, blow that up a little bit more. We still have our Bezier pin, so we'll click here to add a point. Now if we hold our option, you'll see the tool turns into a V, so we can break that, bring this over here. Now we'll add another point, hold down Command, drag that over, and we'll adjust the handles on this. Click another point, drag it over, we'll adjust those to get the curve here. And on this brown part, we want to stay inside the brown, not get too close to the edge so we don't get this little jaggedy look. Now we can drag this one down. We'll drag this one down. Adjust those handles. And on these bottom ones, we want to get a little bit of that black area that has a shadow. adjust those to there. Now we'll hold the space bar down. We'll get the hand tool and just move over a little bit. Hold command, click on this node, drag it down. Adjust that. We'll need to add another node there. Then we'll hold option. We'll break this one and drag it down. And we got that there. The line here is way up in the brown, so we're just gonna click there and add a node. Hold Command, just drag that down a little bit. All right, so now we have our second path. Go back to our Paths palette and you'll see we have the first path and we have that second path we just did. Now while we're here on the Paths palette, I'm gonna click the second path. I'm gonna come over here and right click this little menu and click on Make Selection. And we'll just say OK. And you see we get the marching ants around. So with that selection, I'm going to come down here to the bottom of the layers palette. And this third icon in is the mask tool. I'm going to click that. And what that's going to do is everything outside of this shape is going to mask it out. And if you ever need to go back to that original background, you can come over here to your layers palette. And you can shift click on this mask. And that'll temporarily turn the mask off where you can see the original background. And if you click that again, 
it'll just reapply the mask. Then what we can do is we can come down here and we can add a new layer. We'll drag that below our product image and we can just add a color to that. So we just hit command delete to fill it with black and you could change that to any color that you want. You could do uh, this purplish color. We can just hit option delete, fill it with purple or whatever color you want it to be, blue. Okay, now we have our product set up. Now what we want to do is add the area that we're going to apply the artwork to. So we're just going to click back on the product here, the first layer. Then we're going to come over and grab our rectangle tool and we're just going to draw a rectangle. And we'll fill that with a different color, maybe this pink. And then we want to just kind of position this over that area. Now while we have this rectangle layer selected, we're going to right click on that layer. We're going to go to convert to smart object. You can also click this flyout menu and select convert to smart object from there. And with this layer selected, I'm going to come over here to my layers palette again to opacity. I'm just going to turn that down so I can see through that layer. That way it's going to make it easier to position this. Now what we want to do is fit this rectangle shape to this product shape. So now what we're going to do with this rectangle layer selected, we're going to press command T to bring up the transform tool. So now we're going to come down to the corner and our cursor will turn into a rotate tool. We're going to click and drag and rotate this. I'm just going to grab that and move it up so I can kind of line this edge up with the bottom of the product here. So that's pretty good right there. We'll move it down just a little bit where it hangs over that edge just a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is grab this node, just pull it straight down. I'm going to grab this one, pull it in just a little bit. And then what we want to do is we want to right click on this shape, go to skew. I'm going to grab this node, drag that over. And I want to get this angle to match the angle of the product right there. about right in there, matches this one. Now I want to match this top one, so I'm going to grab that same node, drag that down, and this line matches the line of the product pretty good right there, maybe down just a little bit more. Now let's get our last side over here, pull that over. That looks pretty good there. Now we can right click on this again, go back to scale, and we can drag this out just a little bit just so we have just barely a little bit of overhang. And then once we have that, we'll just hit return to lock that in. Now while I have this rectangle layer selected, I'm gonna go back to opacity. It's gonna turn that back up to 100%. Now you'll see I have this box over that product, but we can't really see the product. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go back to my paths palette. I'm gonna click that first path that we drew just around the white part here. And I'm gonna command click on the icon to bring up these marching ants. I'm gonna go back to my layers palette with the rectangle selected. I'm gonna come back down here to my mask tool. It's the little rectangle with a hole in the middle. Just click that and it'll apply a mask to that layer and it'll mask out everything outside. So when we place our picture in here, you'll only see the area on top of the mat. So now that we have our template set up, let's go ahead and save that. We'll just do file, save as, we'll say mat template. Let's save that. As, I'm just going to save that as a Photoshop document. Save it as layers. All right, so now we have that saved. Okay, now let's say the customer comes in and they want you to do a mock-up for a mat, for a placemat. So you have the artwork all done and you need to apply it to this. What you're going to do is you're going to come to this rectangle layer and we can rename these if we want to say art layer, this can be placemat, and this one background color. All right, so we're gonna click on our art layer and we'll double click on this. And what that's gonna do is open up a little window for that layer. We can blow this up a little bit. So we're gonna get our artwork. We're gonna fit our artwork to this box. So we'll do file open and we'll grab the artwork here that we want to use. Once we open this, we're going to click and we're going to drag it to this rectangle1.psb and we'll drop it right there on top of that. 
Now we want to do Command T to bring up our transform tool. We'll get the edge. We'll hold Shift Option, drag that from the middle to scale that down. We'll put it there and we'll stretch it to fit that box exactly. Then we'll hit Return to lock that in. Then we're going to do Command W. We're going to say Save. We'll just close that artwork. And now when we go back to our template, you can see it's applied that artwork to our product template. But you can also see that it looks like the image is just on top of it. So in order to get the image to kind of sink into the product, to make it look like it's on the product, what we can do is make sure that layer is selected, the artwork layer, come up here to our blending modes and switch that to multiply. And that'll make it look like it's on the product instead of just a white piece of paper on top of the product. If you want to change this picture for another customer, all you've got to do is just double click on that art layer again, delete that, and we'll do file open. We'll open a new piece of artwork. Let's use this one. We'll click and drag it under that rectangle onepsb drop it right there in the middle. Command T, we'll just scale that down to fit. And I'm just going to put that right there in the middle. And I'm going to hit return to lock that in. Then I'm going to press command W, click save. And I'm going to go back to my template. And you can see it's applied that artwork to our placemat. So once you get this template built the first time, you can just save it as a template. And then each time, all you have to do is replace the artwork. And if you want to do a different background color, you just come over here to the left. You can pick the color that you want to change the background to. Uh, let's do like a dark purple color to go with that pink. Click OK. Make sure you have that background layer selected and just press Option Delete. And there's the purple background. Okay, so that's one template that we can do. We'll just save that. Okay, so the next one we're going to do is like a rounded product, like a mug. And so we'll just open up our mug shape. File, open, white coffee mug, open. Now we're going to do the same thing we did a while ago. We're going to drag this down, make a copy, turn that one off. Now we can get our Bayesier pin, and we're just going to draw around this. And the good thing about this is for each product you do this for, you only have to do it once because you can save it and just reuse these over and over. So it might take you a few minutes the first time to set this up, but once you've got it built, then you know you're good to go. Plus this will give you a little this will give you a little practice on drawing your lines with the Bayesian pen. Cause the better you are with the Bayesian pen, the more art you can create in like Illustrator or Corel Draw or Photoshop that you know where you have to use a Bayesian pen a lot. And I know people just starting out doing vector graphics really hate the Bayesian pen, but in order to be effective with a vector program, you really got to be able to be able to draw with the, you really got to be able to draw with the Bayesian pen, so. All right, just a few more minor adjustments here. And I think we're pretty good on that. Now I'm just going to knock out this middle part of the handle. And that's pretty good right there. We'll just straighten that up. Alright, so now we have our path drawn around. 
go here to our layers palette to our paths you can see our work path here now what I want to do is command click on that picture to get the marching ants come back over to my layers I'm going to come back down here and I'm going to click on this mask tool again to mask out the background and I see I missed a little bit down here but when you do it for real you can take a few extra minutes and get this good then what we can do is add a layer drag that below and then we can add a color to that black or whatever color you want now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this cup over here I'm going to grab this layer I'm going to drag this down on top of this new layer icon and it'll make a copy of that layer I'm going to drag this cup back over command T I'm going to right click flip horizontal then I can press return to lock that in drag this on over to right about there I'm going to grab both layers kind of center those come up here to image canvas size I'm going to make that about 40 wide say OK come back to my color layer command delete and now we have our mug set up and when you print mugs you can wrap it all the way around so by doing it this way you can show them what it's going to look like on both sides of the mug when you apply the graphic you can also put like a picture on one side and text on the other but that way they can still see what both sides are going to look like okay so in order to set this up to be able to apply the picture we need to set up our boxes again so we're going to grab our rectangle tool we're going to click here just draw a rectangle about the size of the area where we want the picture to be we'll just click on this change that to pink color and I'm going to press command T I'm just going to pull that out to the edge pull this up some I just want that to be on the edge of the cup there because that's going to be in the middle where the image is going to keep going so I think that's pretty good that's like the maximum size of the image for the cup return to lock that in now I'm going to take that rectangle come down here to my new layer icon make a copy of that layer I'm going to drag this over on top of this one and when you make a copy of these make sure you do it while it's still a rectangle if you make a copy of the layer after it's a smart object then it's going to repeat it's going to repeat the same image in both sides because they'll be linked together so make sure you make a copy of this while it's still a rectangle before you convert it to a smart object okay so now that we have our two rectangles we're going to click on each one right click on the layer convert to smart object click on this one right click convert to smart object so now we have those set up pretty good but we need to kind of work these to kind of fit the mug so we'll select this left one command T then we'll right click on this layer go to warp and we're going to adjust these little handles a little bit to get it to fit the contour of the mug we'll pull these down a little bit We want to try to keep these lines straight and if this gets kind of wavy we can click here in the middle and we can straighten it up we want to kind of have these bend down just a little bit in the middle like that just to kind of give it that 3d look now hit return now we'll click on this other one and we'll do the same thing command T go to warp we'll adjust these little handles again about there we'll just click here in the middle and pull down just a little bit to get just a little bit of curve there then we we'll hit return and now we have both of these set up for our pictures so we'll save this file file save as mug template save that say ok and like I said earlier, once you get these templates set up, you don't have to keep setting these up every time. All you have to do is replace the picture. Just save this template. So we'll click on the left rectangle here. And the way you add the picture to this is just like on the other one. Double click on that layer and it'll open up this rectangle one. So we want to fit our image to this. So we're going to use that same image we used earlier. We'll just do file open and we'll get this image again. And we want to grab this, drag it up to rectangle one, drop it in, command T. We want to transform this to fit. 
One thing about this is, since we want this one image to wrap all the way around the cup, we need to put a half of the image on this side of the cup. So we're gonna just scale that down to right there where it's in the center. Then we'll press return. Then we're gonna press command W, hit save. We're gonna go back to our mug. You'll see it's applied that half of the image to our mug. So now let's go, go to the other rectangle. We'll double click on that over here in the layers palette. To open up this window, we'll go back to our artwork, drag that up to rectangle one copy, drop that in, command T. And this time we want the right side of this image. So we'll drag it in, make it fit. We'll scale this down a little bit to where this half of the image is showing. Hit return, command W, hit save, go back to our template. And there we have both halves of the same image on each side of our mug. But you'll see this looks kind of funny because it looks like a piece of paper just taped to the cup. So we'll click on each layer. We'll go back to our blend mode, change that to multiply. And now it looks like the image is on the cup. We'll do the same thing for the other side. And now we have the image that looks like it's actually printed onto the cup. So once you have your image on there, you can just print it out or save a JPEG of it and send it to your customer. And again, just save this file, file save. And then the next time you have another order, just open this file back up, double click, do file open. You can bring in another picture. And again, we'll just drag it on that to the rectangle one, drop it in. We can delete that old artwork, press command T, scale this down. Well, since this is a circle, we probably want to have it fit in proportion. So we can just leave a little bit outside, scale it down as much as you want to. The circle in the middle is still in proportion. Now we can press Command W, save, go back to our template, and you can see that it's changed that. We can add that same one here if we want to. Just drop that in, Command T, scale that down, center it up, return, Command W, save, go back to our template, and there we have it, have the same image on both sides. So anyway, that's how you can make a product template in Adobe Photoshop and just be able to change out the images and send it to your customer really quick. So I guess that's about it for now. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. If you like this video and would like to see more, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel to be notified of new releases. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, Tumblr, and Snapchat at RhinoXNation. If you'd like to join our Facebook group to ask questions or download files from our videos, please click the link in the description below to join. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you later.